Before we get started with today's video, I just want to take you through the structure of this particular series. Um, so we've actually partnered with Linode to bring you this series. Uh, this series will involve two parts. So if you head over to linode.com under events, you should find the Hackersploit uh, Linode Live Linux Server Security Series, and you can just click on more info here. So uh, this series is going to be a 12 part series on how to set up, secure and audit Linux servers. Uh, and will begin on um, the 1st of October. Uh, and the first series will be available on YouTube and will include SSH security essentials, configuring sudo access, securing Apache 2, securing Nginx, and uh, the uncomplicated firewall. Uh, the second part of the series will be hosted on Linode Live, and it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, and again, you can access, uh, you can actually register for that there. This is going to be an advanced series that will build up uh, or build off the first series and will cover things like brute force protection, IP tables, uh, uh, WordPress security and security auditing on Linux with uh, the Linux tool. Um, so to access that, just click on the registration link uh, on uh, on the ON24 platform, and that'll take you here. So that'll give you an idea of all the various webcasts and when they're going to be posted. And it'll give you a summary of what will be covered exactly. These are advanced uh, webcasts that will be about 40 minutes, and you can register for them absolutely free of charge. Uh, we've also uh, partnered with Linode to give you guys a free credit. Uh, so again, if you are interested in using Linode uh, for your vir virtual private server or for your hosting, whether you're a developer or a administrator, uh, you can get $100 of 90 day credit. Uh, and th this is for new accounts. Um, so that's fantastic. Definitely do take advantage of this if you're getting started with Linux or you're actually following, uh, you're following along with this series. However, make sure to actually redeem this offer or this code, uh, which is under promo.lindo.com uh, and the code is hackersploit100. Uh, this offer will only be limited till the 15th of December, so definitely check that out. That being said, let's get started with today's video. Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Linux security series. In this video, we'll be continuing where we left off from. Uh, where we are talking about configuring SSH security and securing SSH in general. In this video, we'll be moving uh, on to actually giving or assigning user permissions to the dev account. And I'll also show you how to disable the root account from being logged into or accessed. Uh, and that's something that you might or might not want to enable uh, or disable based on uh, on your current setup. So. In the previous video, we set up the dev account and the way we were going about security was we were creating accounts or setting up the server based on segregation of duties. So again, we have the development team that's going to be using the server. So we created the development account. We now need to assign relevant permissions to the development account because the development team is going to require, a, uh, you know, root, they're going to require the ability to run certain commands with root privileges. They're going to uh, require uh, or they're going to actually need uh, to perform some administrative tasks like updating repositories, updating packages, installing new packages, so on and so forth. So to do that, they require some root privileges and to assign them, uh, again, it's very, very simple. So what I'll be taking you through is modifying the sudo as file. Uh, however, before we do that, I just want to show you that right now uh, within the dev account, which is what I'm currently logged into, if I try and run a, uh, an administrative uh, command like uh, updating the repository. And if I hit enter, you can see it's going to tell me dev or the user dev is not in the sudo as file. This incident will be reported. Well, what this means is that I don't have the necessary privileges to run these commands. And it tells us to look um, at the sudo as file. Now the sudo as file uh, can be accessed um, uh, can be accessed within the Etsy directory by a user that has root privileges. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to switch into the root user here. It's going to ask me for the root password. I'll just provide that here, and I'll just go into my um, I'll just go into my home directory here, and uh, we will. Okay, so we can now say vim. I'll use the uh, vim editor. So Etsy, and uh, we are looking for the sudoers file. So if I type in sudo as and I hit enter, you're going to see something very interesting uh, on the first line of this particular file, it's going to tell us this file must be edited with the v sudo command as root. So uh, this file or this configuration file, as it were, 
essentially allows you to set up and configure permissions for users system wide. It allows you to set up various aliases. Uh, it allows you to set up group permissions, so on and so forth. Uh, and that makes it a very important file when it comes down to security. And for that reason, uh, a tool or utility called vsudo is used to modify this file. Now, the reason we use vsudo is because uh, number one, if we make a mistake with the syntax in regards to assigning permissions within here, that can cause a lot of problems if we save that file with incorrect uh, permissions or incorrect syntax. Uh, and that's why we have the utility vsudo. So vsudo will check the file when you save it or before you save it. It'll check the file for any logical mistakes you're making. It'll check it for any syntax errors, uh, anything that, that might cause misconfigurations with the system. And it'll actually tell you where the error is and allow you to correct it. So it's, a, it's imperative that you use vsudo. And uh, so we can just actually uh, write and quit. And you can see it tells us that this file is read only. So that means we uh, need to use vsudo. Now to use vsudo, uh, we simply need to type in sudo and vsudo. However, let's just take a look at uh, our current sys uh, scenario here in terms of groups. So uh, if I say uh, groups, if I use the groups command and I say groups uh, for the user dev, we can see that the only uh, group that the user dev is in is in, in its own group, which is dev, which means it isn't in any particular group. Uh, and uh, if I take a look at the groups for the user root, um, you can see that the root user is going to be in its own. Uh, it's going to be in its own. And uh, that's because when working with Debian, uh, we have the pseudo group. Now, the pseudo group is a group that uh, essentially allows you to, or if you're a part of, will allow you to run administrative uh, commands or allow you to run commands with root privileges with the sudo command as a prefix. So for example, if I open up the um, say if I say sudo and v sudo, right, and we'll just open up the file and this will become much more clearer. This will open up the sudo as file with the nano editor. So again, we can now go to the bottom here. And uh, we are looking for user privilege specification. And uh, we can then allow members of a group to or of a group sudo to execute any command. So this is your group uh, privilege specification. So for the users, you can see the root user has been added here. And this is the privilege or uh, this, this is the privilege or permission specification. So we can pretty much see that the root user can run a, it, it can run a whole plethora of commands or essentially or in essence, it can run all the commands available, which is, you know, exactly what the root account should be able to do. We can then go ahead and add the dev account here and also give it the ability to run all, uh, all, all commands or give it, you know, all permissions and making it equally as powerful to the root account. We can do that or uh, we can also add it to the to the sudo group or and to do that we would need to uh, use the user mod command so what i'll do is i'll just exit here for a second if i say user mod and i say uh, user mod add to the group and then i specify the group here which is going to be sudo and then the user i want to add to the group which is dev and hit enter it's going to say that's not found i need to use the sudo command hit enter and uh, now if i say groups for the user dev it's going to tell me that the dev user also belongs to the sudo group, which means the dev user can now run administrative commands or run commands with root privileges. As I said, you can also use the vsudo or this, uh, you can also modify the sudo as file and add the user directly here. So again, you can simply go ahead and type in um, dev and we then say um, all is equal to all and we use a colon there all and of course all now of course we can modify this uh, we can modify these commands uh, or the the permissions to uh, to essentially specify what commands a uh, a user can run uh, and uh, again that's something we'll probably be covering in another video and i've spoken about the sudo as file uh, in other videos where i talk about specifying various uh, user and command aliases where you can then again customize the permissions uh, on a granular level. Uh, that being said, we've already added the uh, the dev user to the sudo group. Um, so I'll just hit Control O to save that the way it is, and we can now exit. And if I switch into the dev user right over here, and I'll just go into my home directory and try and run an administrative command like updating my 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 repositories, and I hit Enter, it's going to ask me for my password and I hit enter, you can see we can now run the sudo apt update command and we can do a whole uh, lot more with the sudo 
uh, prefix right over here. So we now have granted the dev uh, a user account administrative privileges, which is great. And we uh, in the previous video, we talked about disabling a pass uh, password based authentication, and we set up our SSH keys. So we've pretty much secured the server really well. We've also disabled uh, root logins via SSH, which is great. Um, now let's talk about disabling uh, the root account. And when I talk about disabling it, I mean, uh, essentially, uh, dis uh, essentially refusing or revoking access to the account. And there's tons of ways you can do this. Uh, one of the ways is to change the password or to lock, you can lock the user account password uh, using the password command. And um, if I just open up the man pages for the password command, and I go to lock, which should be right over here, uh there we are we have the lock command so the lock command will lock the password of the named account this option disables a disables the password by changing it to a value which matches no possible encrypted value and it adds a an, an exclamation mark at the beginning of the password so what this will do is if i'm in the dev user account and i log in and i try and switch to the root account uh, and I try and enter the password, it may be correct or it may be not, I'll not be able to log in at all. Uh, now, this is a great way of restricting access from other users on the system, like the dev account. So I'll, I'll just give you an example. So let's say I give the uh, the dev account administrative, uh, you know, administrative privileges and they're able to run certain commands as root and they try and log into the root account. They may have the password or they may not have it, but they try and log in regardless of whether they have the password or not they'll not be able to log in using password based authentication and i'm talking about that locally not via ssh of course they've established the initial ssh connection using the dev account but if they try and switch locally as we have been doing they'll not be able to do it and the only way then to log into the root account is to set up another ssh key and then the only person who has the ssh key to the root account will be able to access it there However, as we know, we have disabled uh, the, the root account from being logged into via SSH. So that's not something we want to do. So again, this is not something that is recommended you do if you plan on using the root account again. Uh, but it's, it's a very, very helpful option uh, if you want to disable access to it or you want to ensure that no one will get access to it in the event of a, of a, of a compromise. So to, to, to set this up, we use sudo and we can then say password and we say L to lock, and then we specify the user that we want to lock, and we hit enter. It's gonna tell us the password expiry information is changed. If we display the, and I'll just use the sudo command, and if I say cat um, Etsy shadow, like so, and I hit enter, uh, if we take a look at the password hashes for the root user, you can see the exclamation mark has been added. And this is a password, of course, whose hash has been changed and does not match that one of the original password. So uh, that's how to lock it. Now, as I said, let's actually see this in action. If I say switch user into the root user, and if, even if I enter the legitimate password, you can see it's going to tell me right over here in a few seconds, there's an authentication failure. And that's because the password does not match. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And again, as I said, this this will be great, or this again can be used to um, to ensure that no one gets access onto the um, on onto the root account. Now, to unlock an account, we simply just change the L to U to mean unlock, and we hit enter. And if I try and log in now again, and I enter in my correct password. I can do that and voila. So it's uh, really very simple to do that. And let me just go back into the dev account. Now, the second way of disabling the root account is uh, to actually change the uh, the shell, the login shell to something uh, or to the to change the actual login shell, which by default is going to be set to bash to the no login binary shell, which again prevents anyone from logging in or uh, rather simply, uh, it does not allow anyone to essentially interact with the account. And as we know on Linux, the main, uh, the main interface for interaction is through the terminal. So I can explain this really simply. If I go in and I type in cat etsy password to list out all the user accounts and all the other various um, uh, configurations for the account, if I take a look at the dev user, you can see the dev user uh, has a home directory right over here. This is the user ID. These ID is a thousand 
and if we take a look at the shell you can see it's bash so that means whenever we try to log into the dev user we will be greeted with a bash shell we can also change this to another shell like the born shell we can change it to uh to the z shell so on and so forth However, there's something very interesting here. If you take a look at the service accounts that uh, deal with maintaining various services like MySQL, you can see, uh, let's take another example like SSH here. You can see that the, the default terminal is sent uh, or the default shell is set to uh, user sbin no login. What that means is you cannot log into this particular account via SSH, or uh, you can't uh, you can access it remotely as well, or you can't access it locally. So that means when I change the root account default shell to user sbin lo uh, no login, I'll not be able to do I'll not be able to log into it uh, at all via either locally or remotely so again that's something you want to be very cautious with uh, you want to ensure another account on the system has root privileges so that you can all you can always revoke this and change it back to uh, bash so i can just show this to you uh, remember the root account is not locked anymore so to to actually change this all we need to do is we can use the change shell utility so we say sudo change shell which is chsh and then we specify the user we want to change the shell for from or the 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 shell we want to change uh, of the particular user so we hit enter and we change the default bin bash to user s bin and uh, we say no login right and um, i believe that is correct and we hit enter and now again if we display if you use cat etsy password and we take a look at the top here for the root user you can see it's set to user has been no login so if we try and log in to the root user so uh, switch user root and regardless of whether i hit my password you can see it's going to tell me this account is currently not available so that means that no one locally can escalate their privileges to the root account uh, and of course if they do they'll need to specify a custom variable that uh, that actually explicitly uh, specifies what shell to use that being said it's it's highly improbable that that will be the case so this is a very good security feature if you're working on hardening your server uh right okay so as i said you may want to ensure that before you do this you have the appropriate privileges to revoke this with another user account and to do this uh, or to revoke this all we need to do is just go back into um say sudo change shell and we can just uh, do it like so I'll just enter the password here. It's going to tell us there's a authentication failure. And the reason it's telling us that is because if you remember, we've disabled the actual shell that we can interface with. So that means we'll have to do this manually. So we need to say sudo vim um, etsy and we say password and then we can change it manually within the file here. Although it's always recommended to use the change shell uh, utility. So we'll just change this to bin and bash right and we save that and uh, we should be able to access the root account now i believe uh, or we'll have to restart the system but there we are we can still access it uh, which is fantastic so excellent so in this video we've taken a look at how to set up user permissions uh, for the dev account we've taken a look at the various ways of blocking or locking the root account from being accessed both remotely and locally and that's all that i wanted to cover in this video in the next video we'll be working uh, to secure apache and then in the in the subsequent video after that we'll be taking a look at how to secure nginx and then we'll finally end off uh by talking about how to say how to set up a firewall so uh, with that being said that's going to be it for this video and i'll be seeing you in the next video I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making uh, newer and fresher and better content. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard, and Jerry Speds.